The Dallas Mavericks present a major issue. Question is whether it'll impact their chemistry or opponents. Dallas just announced Christian Wood will come off the bench, with free agent pickup JaVale McGee gracing the starting five. Christian started in all but one of the 109 games which he played in H-Town for the Rockets, so it'll be interesting to see how the athletic floor spacing five adapts back into the sixth man role like he had with the Detroit Pistons. Last spring, Dallas came up three wins short of reaching the finals as Luka Doncic cemented himself as a top three to five player in the game today. However, the Warriors did a great job of blitzing him in pick and rolls, and despite averaging 32 points per game in the conference finals, Doncic shot just 40% from the field. I love the improvement the Slovenian made from the foul line in 2022's playoffs, upping his mental fortitude in comparison to 2021. Luka's patience in passing out of double teams is the next thing he needs to get better at, but here's another thing he needed, a talented weapon to create opportunities for themselves after he was trapped up top by Golden State. Just because JaVale McGee's starting, it doesn't mean Christian Wood won't be featured in crunch time lineups, but is Jason Kidd bringing Wood off the bench actually the right way to go? Will C. Wood fluidly accept that role off the pine? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference, and make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Now into the content. Prior to Jalen Brunson setting sail for New York, leaving in free agency, the Mavericks front office sent the number 26 pick in 2022's NBA draft, Boban Marjanovic, Sterling Brown, Trey Burke, and Marquise Chris to the Houston Rockets in exchange for Christian Wood. He averaged 18 points and 10 boards, but more notably shot 39% from three-point range last year, which was third best among all centers, only behind Minnesota's Carl Anthony Towns and Milwaukee's Bobby Portis. Including power forwards among all big men, Wood was the seventh most efficient deep-range shooter. He took 4.9 of those shots per game, but while over a third of Wood's overall attempts came from deep, 31.2% of his shots also came from zero to three feet, where he made a respectable 73.7% .7 of his field goals. Christian's not known for his defense, which is odd considering he had the seventh best defensive rating at his position last season, despite being on a Rockets team that had the second worst defensive rating among all 30 squads. He's not a laterally quick phenom like Draymond Green, but when guarding in drop coverage, Christian hasn't had the talent around him yet to fully show off his abilities. With mobile, pesky, and high IQ stoppers like Dorian Finney-Smith, Reggie Bullock, and even the developing Josh Green, the Mavericks defensive system should be a great fit for Wood to show off how good of a stopper he can be on the back end of your defense. Wood was sixth among all players at his position in blocks per game, which in addition to his low defensive rating, also prove he's an underrated player on this end. In terms of rebounding, Wood's also first class in that area. Christian was fourth among power forwards in total rebounds, only behind three all-stars in Giannis Adetokounmpo, Demontis Sabonis, and Julius Randle. All of what we just looked at begs the question, why isn't this man in the starting five? There's a lot of hoopla around hearing your name announced as a starter in the association, and as we've seen in the past, it can make or break a player's ego. But by the looks of it throughout his career, Christian hasn't caused too many problems in the locker room. He should be willing to accept this bench role without an issue, but I haven't answered the question I just asked quite yet. Why isn't he starting? The Mavericks already ranked number three among all teams in bench scoring last regular season, and they were fourth in bench scoring only behind the Celtics, Warriors, and Heat in the playoffs, so it's not like they were lacking a punch from the second unit. It's a little bit head-scratching that, given you'd want Christian to be building up as much chemistry as possible with Luka, he's not going to be playing alongside him in the opening minutes. What it comes down to is the Mavericks wanting to give more assistance to Spencer Dinwiddie in the minutes where Luka's resting. There was a lot on Dinwiddie in the postseason last year. Another potential reason could be Dallas wanting more rim protection and rebounding to start games. But again, just because JaVale's starting, it doesn't mean he'll be playing more minutes than Christian. Speaking of the three-time champion McGee, though, here's what he had to say about his decision to join the Mavericks. Quote, 
Seeing seven straight games of Luka definitely helped, end quote. That statement from JaVale probably shows you why we shouldn't be questioning Jason Kidd and this Dallas team because Luka and the Mavs put the 2021 Western Conference champions and 64-win Phoenix Suns in absolute shambles. The Robert Sarver-led organization's coach in Monty Williams reportedly went the entire offseason without talking to his players after what Doncic did in the second round, which included outscoring the entire Phoenix team in the first half of Game 7. DeAndre Ayton's interview saying he hasn't spoke to his head coach went viral, and as I tweeted out, the lack of accountability from the Suns' man in charge is just insane. Coaches typically take the offseason to let their players know where they need to improve, or at the very least they check in with their players to see where they are mentally. After what Luka did to Phoenix, Monty should have been 10 times more motivated to check in on his guys, but instead, by not talking to his players, that displayed a sign of PTSD. Luka's lethally consistent post-up repertoire, shooting touch, and feel for the game has a knack for inflicting that type of trauma when it matters most. Three playoff runs throughout his prolific four-year career have seen Doncic average 32.5 points, 9.3 boards, 7.9 dimes, and 1.5 steals per game. Despite Luka's free throw percentage being below 70%, his true shooting percentage is still at a more than solid 58% mark, which shows you how efficient he is from the field and from deep. The stats are beyond impressive, yet still somehow don't tell the full story when it comes to how Doncic can absolutely destroy opposing defenses. When isolated, Luka's ability to read and react to what his defender's giving up and act accordingly is probably better than any player I've ever witnessed personally. From his James Harden-esque stepbacks, Stephen Curry-esque range, LeBron James-esque vision, to his Kobe Bryant-esque post-scoring, Luka's clearly taken bits and pieces from an array of superstars who came before him, and it's a sight to behold. It's scary that Doncic will be in prime condition after playing for Team Slovenia at the Eurobasket tournament, because Luka's stamina is maybe the one flaw you can point out with him. Considering his stamina can get so much better, and he's achieved what he has in his playoff career already, that's also intimidating for opponents. What will Doncic average in 2022-23? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's two winners are Black Hole Bob and KT. Black Hole Bob says, This year is the year Stephen Curry makes an all defensive team and wins DPOY, or at least gets rid of the narrative he can't play defense. And KT says, New Orleans is a very underrated team. They have a very nice mix of youth and experience. They lack at the point, but CJ, BI, and Zion can chip in to get their offense going. 